Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we will be discussing about structure of atom and thermionic emission. So we are going to give more importance to thermionic emission. Uh, but before going detail into thermionic emission, we shall just have a look on the atomic structure. So many of you will be aware of the atomic structure, but there will be students who will be doing diploma in radiography without a science foundation or without plus two science. So we'll just have a look on atomic structure and then we will discuss what is thermionic emission. Okay, so let's go into atomic structure. So we shall discuss uh, what is an atom, uh, what are the subatomic particles and how they are arranged inside the atom. What is an atom? An atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains all the properties of an element, which means all matter or all materials are made up of tiny units known as atoms. Now, if we consider living organism, we know that all living organisms are made up of units known as cells. Just like that, all matter is made up of small units which are known as atoms. These atoms, they combine in a specific proportion in order to form molecules. We know that water is a molecule of oxygen and hydrogen atom. Now, what are the subatomic particles? Inside the atom, you can find three main particles that is electrons, protons and neutrons. These three particles are known as subatomic particles. Now we will discuss each particle in detail. What is an electron? Electron is a negatively charged particle having a very minute mass that is 9.11 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg. The size of electron is very small that we cannot measure the size of electron. So electron means it is a negatively charged particle and you will find these electrons inside the atom surrounding the nucleus in specific orbits or shells. The next one is protons. Protons are positively charged particle. They are present inside the nucleus of an atom and they have 1836 times the mass of an electron which is equal to 1.6726 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg. Now, what is an atomic number? The number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number. If you want to find out the atomic number of an element, this atomic number will be equal to the number of protons present in the atom of that element. The protons and the third particle that is neutrons are found inside the nucleus of an atom and hence they are collectively known as nucleons. The third particle that is nucleo, nu, uh, sorry, neutrons, so these neutrons are neutral particles that means they do not carry any charge and they have mass almost similar to the mass of proton that is 1.6749 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg and the mass of neutron is 1839 times the mass of electron. As I said earlier, neutrons and protons, they are collectively known as nucleons because they are present inside the nucleus. The neutrons are chargeless particle, protons are positively charged particle. Hence, the net charge of nucleus is positive because of the positive charge carried by protons. So this is how electrons, protons and neutrons are arranged inside the atom. So in this picture you can see nucleus in the center which is denoted by N. Surrounding the nucleus you can find black circles. These are the orbits or shells. In the orbits or shells you can find electrons. Inside the nucleus, you will find two particles, that is neutrons and protons. Neutrons are chargeless particles. Protons carry positive charge. Hence, the net charge of nucleus is positive charge. 
the charge of electron is negative charge. So there is a force of attraction between the nucleus which is positive charge and the electron which is negative charge. Now these electrons are bound to the nucleus with the energy known as binding energy. So the binding energy of the electrons decreases as the electrons move away from the nucleus. Now in the figure you can see the shell closest to the nucleus is known as K shell. It is denoted by the letter K. Then we have L shell that is next to K shell is the L shell. Then next to L shell we have M shell. The binding energy of the electrons will be the maximum in K shell. It will, it will be decreased in L shell. It will further decrease in M shell. Again, as the electrons moves away from the nucleus, the binding energy decreases. Now, how many electrons will be present in each shell? This will be determined by using a formula known as uh, formula that is 2n square, where n denotes the number assigned to each shell. For k shell, the value of n is 1. For l shell, the value of n is 2. For m shell, the value of n is 3. Now let's find out how many electrons will be present in k shell. For k shell, value of n is 1. So we can use the formula 2n square, that is 2 into 1 square, which is equal to 2. Now the number of electrons in l shell, so 2 into 2 square, that means 2 into 2 square is 4. So 2 into 4 is equal to 8. So the number of electrons in L shell is 8. For M shell, the value of N is equal to 3. So 2 into 3 square. 3 square is 9. So 2 into 9, that is equal to 18. So M shell will carry 18 electrons. So this is how we denote or we find out the number of electrons in each shell. So I'll repeat once more. Nucleus is present in the center of the atom which contains neutrons and protons. Neutrons are chargeless particles. Protons are positively charged. Surrounding the nucleus you have orbits. In the orbits we have electrons. The number of electrons is denoted by the formula 2n square. Now we shall discuss what is thermionic emission. Thermionic emission is a process of emission of electrons from the atom when a material is heated to a high temperature. That means if you are going to heat a material to a very high temperature, what happens? The electrons present in the atom of that material will get ejected out of the atom and they will travel to the surface of that material. This process is known as thermionic emission. What is the importance of thermionic emission in radiology? The process of thermionic emission is used inside the X-ray tube in the cathode for the generation of electrons. In the X-ray tube, the cathode is made up of a material known as tungsten. So the cathode of an X-ray tube is a tungsten filament. Now we will be heating the tungsten filament to a very high temperature. As a result of the heating of the tungsten filament, electrons will be liberated from the atom, from the atom of tungsten and it will travel to the surface of the filament. Now, the electrons present in the surface of the filament is known as space charge. These electrons will be accelerated towards the anode, which is the target, with the help of a high potential or a high voltage. As a result of the stoppage of electrons by the target or deceleration of the electrons by the target, there is production of X-rays. So we can uh, say that the process of thermionic emission is very much important in the production of X-rays. Now I said that the cathode of the X-ray tube is made up of a material known as tungsten. Now this tungsten has to be heated to a temperature of 2200 degrees Celsius so as to emit a useful number of electrons. We will discuss the process of thermionic emission detailed in the construction and working of X-ray tube, which will be my next video. So you can learn more about thermionic emission 
and the importance of thermionic emission in the x-ray tube thank you so much for watching if you find this video useful please like share and subscribe thank you